We are in uh, Baniata on the island of Rendova in the Solomon Islands. And, uh, and here in Baniata, the beaches adjacent to Baniata, there once were uh, a large number of leatherbacks using these beaches for nesting. Uh, the local people used a lot of those animals in, in terms of consumed them. Um, and today there is a, a very small population that's using these beaches. The local people here in uh, the village of Baniata are now doing the monitoring work and are being provided incentives to do that monitoring work. And that includes uh, finding the nests, um, uh, documenting the number of eggs, and ensuring that some of those eggs actually hatch. This is the third year that the, we've been paying incentives for um, the turtle program here on, in Baniata. And this community is, is pretty good. There's not a, a leader per se as a chief, a traditional chief, but there are village organizers, and everybody seems really willing to come together and discuss the issues, and they're open to, to new ideas and things like that. And I think that's why this program has worked so well here. The communities have a, a community fund that we put money into uh, for every turtle that gets tagged, every nest that gets laid, and every um, uh, every hatchling that comes out. And so there's a certain price tag on each of those things, and that's money for conservation basically and uh, it has worked here uh, just five years ago they were eating the leatherback turtles we now have um, most of the people on board and conservation is in the front minds of, of most of the people in, in these villages over here you have uh, one of the monitors has collected the eggs that otherwise would have washed away and has reburied them in the sand here. So they are essentially uh, have initiated a relocation program to try and improve the hatch success and the uh, patrollers, the community um, that participate in that get rewarded if the nests um, rewarded that's compensated with, with uh, money for uh, documenting that they produce hatchlings. So they're a little bit further ahead in terms of uh, management uh, than some of the other beaches we've been working on that have more turtles. And that's where we want to get to with the other projects where they are, have some sort of management program to assess and improve hatch success. And these guys have fewer nests, but at least they are um, trying to save the ones that, that are laid here. In just five years, people have come from looking at their resources as sellable, as food sources, as just the bare minimum. The cash economy only came two generations ago, and the people are now looking at conservation as a viable way to look towards the future. Yeah, we had an opportunity to sit down with some of the patrollers, and uh, it's sort of interesting to hear some of the uh, stories about how there used to be thousands of turtles here. It kind of reminds me of Malaysia, you know, where in the 70s, they're talking about 70s, maybe early 80s, being thousands of turtles, they probably mean thousands nests, and uh, certainly killing of the adults and take of eggs, if it was intensive, would have wiped that population out. So. The interesting thing is, normally we wouldn't get too excited about just um, one or two turtles nesting somewhere, but it seems like if historically it was a large population, then potentially with some conservation over 20 years or so, um, that population might, might recover. So that, that's what's intriguing about, about this area. So we'll keep it on our radar. Uh, but clearly what we saw in Sassacola and Isabel, that's where currently those are the populations that, that we need to work with in terms of those are the, where the higher density nesting is in the region. They have the larger populations. But they have a good infrastructure here um, in terms of providing these incentives and it is a, it's also a very beautiful place. Black sand beaches here which are uh, a little bit un unusual. We haven't seen this, uh, this uh, darkness yet, that uh, sand. Very beautiful place, very friendly people and we're happy to be here. And it's a good model for uh, what they want to do in, in Sassacolo, with, uh, where we were in Isabel, because they have much more of a history of developing community-based conservation and, and the, the infrastructure. So uh, our, our partners, John and uh, Peter, are you know, interesting, interested in maintaining the, the involvement here with the Leatherbacks, just to kind of see the model of how, how they run the community incentive program. We are going to be here tonight in hopes of putting out one more transmitter here. Uh, we have one left from the, from the group of ten we had, 
and we will also be, like to provide some training to the local people um, on pit tagging techniques and uh, ways to you know, take measurements of carapace lengths and widths and so that data can be standardized and comparable to other data sets around the world. It's been a productive visit so far. So tonight will be a roll of the dice. Yeah, we, we need to get lucky tonight to get our last transmitter out and hopefully a, a, an animal that we could do some of this training, this hands-on training with the, the local rangers here. Uh, so we need one, at least. So we're taking our chances on the beach. Uh, Havila. The Havila Beach. And, um, and we'll see how lucky we get.